Next talk will be Game Theory to the Rescue when hard decisions are to be made. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next speaker, Alexander Handoff. <laughs> Oh, probably wait until the talk's finished, but thank you anyway. <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to talk about game three, obviously, today. So uh, let me introduce yourself and uh, myself. Uh, so in my day job, I develop and I consult. So I'm moving vertically through things. And I review technical solutions and we work on high, bringing high-tech startups together with bigger companies if they have something that helps both companies. So that's what I'm doing in the daytime. If you have a challenging high-tech startup, talk to me. Maybe we can help you. Um, and also, I'm one of the organizers of the conference here. I'm program chairing. I'm also active in the MongoDB community. Um, I like to talk. And if you have any comments, questions, feel free to ping me on Twitter later. Um, game theory. Um, we will only be able to scratch the surface of game theory um, today. So there won't be no coding. Few last chance to leave now. Um, <laughs> and I, I hope I can give, give you an idea about game theory because it's it's a little bit alive beyond if, else, else if. Um, it's 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 a glance into a, a different life a little bit. Um, I stumbled across using it just like by coincidence uh, at the beginning of the year while actually the um, call for proposals were running. Um, and uh, yeah, people seem to like the idea, um, unfortunately. <laughs> so um, I mean, game theory is a very human concept. Yeah? It's not tech. It has a background uh, in economics and philosophy. and. Uh, and I think you can imagine yourself, like our world is getting much more hectic, complicated, so many options, decisions, uh, and we are required to, to make decisions all the time. And sometimes this can be really difficult um, or stressful. Um, and, and we very often worry, did we do the right, make the right choice? Yeah? Um, did I pick the right Pokemon to win the next <laughs> challenge? Yeah? Um, uh, so, little knowledge of game theory can become really handy, um, not only coding, life, solving uh, some problems, and uh, yeah, it's about making the best decisions you can, but probably not only best decisions for yourself, also the best decisions for you and the people who surround you. Um, we'll step into that, to that later. So, just think about how do you make decisions? How do you make judgments? Uh, do you really note down like the pros and cons and weight them up? Um, some people do, um, some people don't. They very much uh, rely on their stomach, as we say in Germany. Um, so um, think about do your uh, decisions affect others? And do you care about it? Um, and, and, and that's supposed to be game theory is, is going. Um, you have to anticipate the decisions that others do while you're interacting with them and how they impact you and how your decisions impact the others. And um, yeah, this is basically like the basic idea of game theory. And um, actually, I stumbled across it. Um, for one client, we were, um, were getting messy accounting data in from uh, some very popular um, uh, online platform for videos. And we, we can m check what the, what's in there. Like by, sometimes they just mat match by some word stuff we don't really know and we try to account to the people who gave the video material or audio licenses. And um, so uh, it, it, we could do it manually, but it's, it's like really a lot, a hell lot of data. Um, we would be like, many people um, and not effective because we are, it's, a, it's really a penny accounting business. And so we also use like systems like, for example, like Elasticsearch and we are Elasticsearch. Who knows Elasticsearch? Yeah, most of you. So you know you can also like get a probability back on the quality or the, the results you get. So how you get some indicator how uh, Elasticsearch thinks, how accurate the result is. And so we have, we have something to work with. Um, so, but 
Um, we have a, like also like customized systems. We can look directly in the database. We have some some, some funny search stuff. I don't want to go too deep in this, but just like I was really stuck like in a combination of all. Okay, I have all these expert systems I can ask, um, and uh, probably one expert system will improve my input. And if I put it into the other expert system, I can even get better input. And so um, I was getting really confused, like, <laughs> and um, so. I thought, what about um, game theory? Because I can't really use if, else, else, if, then, wo, 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 um, to really solve it. And so um, I remembered game theory and uh, gave it a try. And so let me introduce you a little bit more into game theory. And I hope it will help you to make decisions in your coding or whatever uh, problems you're facing. Or like basically, maybe just in your life, or maybe even better in your life. Um, so game theory. Very often, if you see a picture about game theory, you will see chess. And yes, but it's actually a very bad example because is game theory about playing games? No. Again, you can leave if you thought this is a game talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not about playing games, it's about interactions between humans, which we can also like pretend. It's, it, we can basically um, imagine it's, it's also like a game, like a simplified version of interactions, we can regard this as a game. And we know games like chess or Go or tic-tac-toe, but um, they are de deterministic. Um, every player knows at every stage of the game everything. You see, you can see, if I'm white, I see the white player on the board, and if I'm black, I see the black player on the board. So everything basically, it would be like playing poker with all cards on the table all the time. Um, and basically, it's just like um, uh, it, it, you can calculate all possible results. Yeah? Of course, we don't because our brains are not capable and even computers are not capable of calculating all the results imaginable um, for, all, um, for each and every move in, um, in time. So um, it's imagining like game theory having all the cards on the table. Um, if the, inform the information is, oh, not, not, sorry, it's not having all the cards on the table. Some information might be hidden. Um, and is there a way um, to determine uh, how you uh, still can evaluate chances, come make build up, basically build up a strategy? And basically this is what I was doing um, as a, as an eight-year-old, I believed I will win chess against uh, the partner of my mother if I just chose the right color in the beginning. Um, after I lost many, many games, I came to the conclusion that's not the case. It's very unlikely. But I think like the average chess player uh, is also trying to find a strategy um, and anticipating what the next moves of your opponent might be, although you can basically calculate each and every possible result. You're anticipating what your player will do, you're anticipating his strategy, and this is getting us a little bit closer to game theory. And so game theory was not just like invented um, uh, overnight. Um, let's have a little glance into uh, game theory history. Uh, it was uh, like first mention, this goes back to the uh, 1700s, um, Walgrave letters, um, the guys from uh, uh, Britain. Um, there's a, a French guy who uh, wrote a paper um, uh, uh, leading in the direction. Um, and then in the beginning uh, of the 20th century, things start to pick up with uh, Ernst Zermolo. Uh, no, oh, I can't read it here, sorry. Ernst Zermolo, um, über die Anwendung der Mengenlehre und die Theorie des Schachspiels. Um, which actually uh, can translate about uh, how applying um, uh, set, theory, set theory in chess games. Um, um, then in the 19, uh, late 1920s, um, the thing starts to really pick up with a paper from a Hungarian uh, a scientist, John von Neumann. Uh, I think he moved to the US later. And he wrote another paper uh, zur Theorie der Gesellschaftsspiele, which is about like theory in uh, board games. And uh, um, 
uh, this paper got noticed a lot, and in 1944, he published uh, a book co-authored with uh, Oskar Morgenstern, uh, Theory of Games and Economic Behavior. And so we see already um, the game theory thing is very close to economics, and usually we think economic and people caring about economics, oh, that's just a soft business, it's not like programming is much more better. So um, we don't probably look into theories there. Um, and the, 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 the challenge is, is, can we build up a mathematical model? Can we basically analyze or calculate results uh, of, of people's actions, um, the, the decisions the players might do? And basically, that's probably the most famous thing in the 1950s. It's like the prisoner's dile dilemma, and John Nash came up with the Nash equilibrium. Oh, I made that word. Um, and uh, yeah, it's very famous because like John Nash's life was uh, a beautiful mind movie, so he's very popular. And by the way, this is a picture of John van Neumann, the Hungarian scientist. So. Background, uh, game theory is in economics, political science, and psychology. It's used as well in logic, computer science, biology, biology and poker. Um, it's an, a mathematical approach to real-life simulations. There are situations that involve two or more decision makers. And each decision maker, you for example, has a number of different actions they might take. Um, and the ultimate outcome does not just begin, depend on your actions, it also depends on what the other people do. Um, so um, you are forced to think and come up with a strategy. Um, and this is basically. So let's start with a really simple game. That's with something easy and practical. It's called zero sum game. And the zero sum game is the winner takes it all. And the other's gain is the other's lost, and I'm really happy so many people, and it's so crowded, because I would like to play Two Finger Mora. So please partner with the one on your right. Everybody picks the right partner. Oh, well, I did. Yeah, it work. Yeah, it does work. Yeah, that's not thank you. Yeah, sorry, 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 I thought you can go from lunch and have a nap. I'm sorry, now back to action. So Two Finger Mora is a very simple game. Pick a partner, and um, you basically, uh, you, cho you have two choices. Show one finger or two finger. And you have to decide who is the even player and who's the odd player. And then, just like as rock and scissors, you um, uh, play with your partner, you show your fingers at the same time, and if the result is even, even player wins, and the result is odd, our player wins, so you basically have 50-50 chance. So, and you have five minutes, and I will be back once you have the results. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, okay, yes. Yeah, oh, you did a simulation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> All right, guys. Five minutes was a joke. Oh, yeah, really. We're enjoying this. <laughs> okay, we continue now. Uh, it's good to hear you all have fun with... I didn't imagine this simple game would make you so lucky. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, but basically, uh, what would be like a mathematical representation of what we were just like doing? Um, yeah, we call this like the strategic form, and basically... Um, Yeah, that's like what we call a strategic form. And so, and this is also like the basis 
you, one can calculate on with like these matrices. Um, so, um, zero, some games, one winner, one loser. It's uh, very competitive. And this is uh, another nice way. Um, it's called non-zero sum games. Um, it's more about synergy and everyone games. And uh, for example, like doing the same game in a little bit different form. So let's do a non-zero same game, but please don't get as excited as. <laughs> yeah. I've only 15 minutes left, and I have to get you to prisoner's dilemma. Is my goal. Um, so um, let's play a, a, a positive way of this thing. Um, let's do the same game, but um, a, a similar game. So if you show the same uh, count of fingers, each of you gets two points, and if it differs, you only get one point. And this is basically about more about cooperation. You want to give it a try? No, I think everybody can imagine. <laughs> so um, you have the idea. So you can like interactions, and this is like very really simple interactions put into a matrix, and we can work with that. Um, there's is there are games with perfect information, as I mentioned, chess, go, tic tac toe. So everybody knows about everything and all the options and outcomes for the other players. And there are games with incomplete information, basically life. So, um, yeah, that's like the, the two. And as next, that's like the classic game theory um, thing, is the prisoner's dilemma. So what is the prisoner's dilemma? Um, the prisoner's dilemma, imagine they're like two criminals. Um, they're already with the police. The police has uh, caught them. And imagine having them in two rooms in the police this train uh, in the in the uh, police headquarters war, and uh, they're being interrogated, uh, interrogated, and uh, the dilemma is um, each of the two criminals does not know how the other criminal will decide. That's so, if you know if you cooperate, I mean, you um, if you ever have seen uh, one of the um, U.S. or uh, uh, the kind of series, they say, if you cooperate, oh, we can make a deal with the DA, and uh, yeah, you can get, you will get free. Yeah. So the thing is, yeah, you know, if you cooperate, um, you might get free. You don't get any sentence. But what if your colleague, your criminal colleague, your cooperator, um, conspirator, also is cooperating? Um, because then both are cooperating, and it's not that oh, all the criminals cooperating, they're just like uh, saying, yes, we did it, we're so sorry, and everybody will get free. Uh, of course, they will, might, they, they will both get a sentence, a reduced sentence, yeah, on that. And the other outcome, of course, is just stay quiet. And probably the, the police won't be able to prove anything, or probably open like, only like a minor crime, um, and then you might only end up with like a one-year sentence. And this is the prisoner's dilemma. We have, we have a nice couple and they, are, they might have done some crime, I don't know, I don't judge. And we have them in two groups. And now let's get it into um, our strategic form. So, confess. Those both confess, they get minus five. You're really screwed. You go to jail for 20 years and you don't want that. And if you both keep quiet, we assume, yeah, okay, you will get some sentence, but not to the full crime. You probably might only end up in, in prison for one year. And how can you actually decide? Because there's two, there's a dominant strategy, what we call in, in game theory, it's, it's a dominant. So what, what's always the best outcome you should choose? And actually confessing is, yes, uh, because you either get, go to jail for one year or five years, but never for 20 years. So this is the best choice. Um, and, uh, and also confessing is only the, 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 the only strong Nash equilibrium um, in the game. And the, and the equilibrium is basically um, when 
there are no more gains for no one in being in the games. So basically, nobody wants to take any action because he can no longer gain from it. Um, and this is, of course, in this simple game, this is just like a one, one round, but just like imagine there's more criminals involved, like a gang of five, and you have to think about, oh, what do the other four people decide on? And it is a completely different game because probably there are a couple, they're very close, and they will never will give each other up. But if it's just like some random guys you met on the street um, and you formed the gang to break in, um, you might tend to decide, oh, let's better confess because I don't trust those guys and also I don't want to be apart. I, I can be apart from them, but you don't want to be apart from your uh, girlfriend or boyfriend uh, for a time. So this is where things can get complicated. Um, and how can we calculate stuff like that? Um, we can use algebra, there's many approaches. Uh, Bayesian uh, Nash equilibriums, we can do just like Monte Carlo situ uh, simulations um, to, um, to, to get some results. And um, yeah, um, and there's some uh, material you can uh, look into. Um, there's um, a Python tool called Gambit. Uh, you can just play around with and uh, think. Uh, there's a really nice blog post uh, from a biologist Martin Jones, uh, it's evolving strategies uh, for an iterated prisoner's dilemma tournament. Um, I think it's, it's, it's very descriptive with outcomes and everything, so it, I had really uh, a lot of fun reading it while doing research for um, this talk. Um, and there's also um, uh, from Stanford on Coursera a game theory um, course uh, from Matthew Jackson, which I think is really good, um, very uh, well uh, taught stuff, and um, yeah, I, I hope I uh, was able to give you a glance into um, game theory, a um, little bit different approach on thinking, um, and yeah, I hope you had a good time, and if there's time left, we can play some more Two Finger Mora. Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah, thank you. Questions? Yes. Hi. Hi. Uh, so first, uh, thank you very much for the talk. Can I ask you that you go back to the slide where you have the matrix? Um, like this? Yeah. So um, here it's very clear. Can you speak up a little bit? I hardly can 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 hear you. Okay. So, yeah. So uh, here I think it's very clear that the optimum for both, if the goal is that they both uh, serve minimum sentence, mm -hmm. is that they both keep quiet. But you said that the Nash equilibrium is basically that if they both would confess. Yeah, basically that's the, like the, that's the, the best strategy is to confess. Why? Because there's no better strategy not confessing. But the thing is, you can calculate like uh, I mean, probabilities. I mean, I, I yeah. don't understand, yeah. sir, to okay. interrupt yeah. you. Sorry. Why you would prefer um, being in prison for five years instead of one? Sorry, I, I, I don't, I don't understand why you would uh, prefer being in prison for five years instead of one. I mean, I know they have good food, but no. The thing is, you don't know what the other one does. That's the problem. You don't know what your partner decides on. That's the whole trick of game. That's a Thank you for the question. That's the key. You don't know what the other party does, yeah. Um, and so you make you need to make a decision on basically uh, what's the best move, but you don't know, yeah. Um, that's why. That's why this is. That's why this is the dominant strategy. It minimizes your loss. You will never go to to prison for 20 years if you confess. Yeah? So like the like the minimum is like the maximum you can. So basically, if you would keep quiet, you would basically risk a very higher penalty. Yeah, basically, if you keep oh, quiet, okay. it's, get, it's a get. higher Thanks. bet. I mean, you, if you know, it's, yeah, you get. Mm -hmm. yeah. So first of all, side note, I think it's interesting how people standing up and being very loud uh, kind of is uh, the tragedy of the comments, so another game oh, theory concept. Right. <laughs> um, but my question really is, uh, were you able to solve your data problems using game theory? I was, yeah, I was able to improve it. 
Um, because like the thing is, when 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 do I end? Like like putting like the information uh, uh, in, into the next system to improve it. So basically, um, uh, I didn't uh, mention it in the talk because it was a little deeper. You can also um, define um, a threshold. And if you know, like the, the gain will be minimum. And I think, uh, if I remember, it was like 5% or so. So if we say we, we, are, we think the information is 95% accurate, and um, after like a th also like a threshold of iterations, so it won't go on forever. I mean, if you just have one letter, it, we might never, we will never get a, a real result. Um, that's, that, that's the two things. Yeah, you can do the threshold. Usually, um, you say like, okay, um, per percentage on probability or like iterations, and then just like take the result as is. But it was very good for improving and interaction on multiple systems. We have a few more questions. We don't have much time, so try to be short. Uh, okay, this is done. We have one question more here. Have you um, used the Python Axelrod uh, no, tournament? Have no, I haven't used it, but I've seen it online during your research. Have you used it? It was developed by a friend of mine at Cardiff University. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, so, um, It's been very interesting in kind of raising interest in Python programmers in the, in the Dilemma, but I just wondered if you um, had a, a strategy in the tournament. Uh, no, actually, like actually, I was quite surprised because I thought when I when I um, did research on uh, uh, when I was trying to solve the problem, um, I was doing. I just thought, okay, Python game theory. I expected like at least ten libraries, and the result there were hardly any. Um, so I was quite surprised because usually there's a Python library for everything in life. Um, so uh, yes, um, it, 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 it'd be great if we could pick up on the like helping and building stuff like that, and also like um, uh, just like add uh, game theory to our tool set of thinking when we're trying to solve problems. Because I know from like, at least I feel uh, being like programming a lot, um, you tend to think very deterministic. Yeah, this is the truth. This is the end. And, Game fear opens up your mind to be a little bit more flexible, finding a, a practical solution. Yeah, so that's, yeah. Very well, we are out of time, so let's thank the speaker. Yeah, thank you.